This is Inspiring Minds, a podcast focused on thought-provoking conversations between VSB students and our world-class faculty. Welcome to Inspiring Minds. My name is Susan Rakowski. I'm a senior studying accounting, business analytics, and international business at VSB. Today, I'm here with Dr. Stephen Litka, who is an associate professor of accountancy. We will be discussing Professor Litka's work on the impact of accounting on information technology outsourcing decisions. Professor Litka's papers in this area have been published in elite journals and have earned two best paper awards. Thank you so much for joining us today, Professor Litka. It's my pleasure to be here with you. So how did you become interested in researching information technology outsourcing? My best friend from my days at Lehigh University, Professor Jim Hall, is actually the expert on information technology outsourcing. Jim and I were having lunch one day, and he was all frustrated explaining to me that there were numerous top executives who were making outsourcing decisions that made absolutely no sense at all, and that those executives must be idiots. So I'm a believer that most executives are extremely bright and that they know what they're doing. So based on my expertise, which is in the area of incentives and decision making, I suggested to Jim that you know maybe these ill-advised outsourcing decisions had nothing at all to do with improving a company's operations, but rather maybe they were being made for accounting reasons. And that's what started us working together. So some executives make unwise information technology outsourcing decisions. How can you tell if an outsourcing decision is wise or inadvisable? Well, there are lots of factors to consider when making an outsourcing decision. For example, generic commodity functions such as payroll sometimes are good candidates for outsourcing. Why create your own payroll system when you can take advantage of the expertise and the economies of scale of a company that does the exact same thing over and over again for many businesses just like yours? On the other hand, it is definitely unwise to outsource functions that are unique to the business and are of high strategic importance. Uh, Take Walmart, for instance. Walmart's known for its inventory management system, which is highly advanced and one of a kind. If Walmart were to outsource that inventory system, the outsourcing vendor isn't going to have any special expertise because they haven't managed a system like that before. And I think it's really ironic that because the outsourcing vendor is not going to have expertise with that inventory system, they're actually going to have to charge a premium for the job to cover the cost of getting themselves up to speed and maintaining those one-of-a-kind assets. Let me take it a step further. If you're unhappy with your payroll provider, it's easy to quickly replace them with another company that does the exact same thing. However, if you outsource a -a one-of-a-kind inventory system or other strategic system and you aren't happy, you can't just switch vendors without having huge disruptions. And in some cases, it's absolutely impossible to switch once you've outsourced. Outsourcing vendors, they definitely recognize this dependency. And they've been known to raise rates pretty dramatically once they have a control over a company's unique strategic IT system. Your research shows that executives might make questionable outsourcing decisions for accounting reasons that have nothing to do with a company's technology operations. Can you elaborate on some of those accounting reasons? So we find statistical evidence that five accounting related factors help drive the unwise IT outsourcing decisions. For example, we find that companies that have poor liquidity are more likely to sign an ill-advised outsourcing contract. The logic follows from the fact that in most of these large-scale IT outsourcing contracts, the vendor actually pays substantial cash upfront to the customer to buy their IT equipment, their facilities, and their personnel. And then the vendor essentially rents those assets back to the customer as part of the contract. So a customer might actually get millions of dollars upfront in return for agreeing to a long-term outsourcing contract. So I think it makes perfect sense that companies with cash problems are going to be enticed by the possibility of this huge short-term cash infusion and are more likely to sign the IT contracts, even if those contracts really don't make a lot of sense for the company in the long term. Uh, I'll give a second example. The terms of large IT outsourcing contracts often are rigged so that a company reports and pays lower technology expenses in the first couple years of the contract but then reports and pays much higher expenses in the later years. So basically, through the contract terms, companies can trade making themselves look better on paper now with the downside of both looking and actually performing much worse in the long term. 
We therefore hypothesize that CEOs whose compensation is based mostly on short-term performance would be enticed by the ability to artificially make their short-term reported performance look much better. And we found that such executives are indeed way more likely than others to sign the, the hard to justify contracts. CEOs are especially likely to endorse these unwise IT outsourcing contracts during their last year of office. So think about this. If a CEO knows that he or she is about to leave their position, that CEO can sign a contract that artificially lowers short-term reported expenses and makes them look absolutely amazing in their last year with the CEO knowing well that they're gonna be long gone before all the negative repercussions occur. That's only two factors. I won't go through the other factors which require a much deeper explanation, but a key takeaway for listeners is to really understand that executive decisions such as IT outsourcing are often driven by the impact of those decisions on firm financial statements and the executive's compensation. So some of this seems really shady, that CEOs might endorse bad IT outsourcing contracts for accounting reasons that mislead stakeholders. Are the firms that do this firms that investors should stay away from? Yeah, uh, they could be. Some of these IT outsourcing decisions absolutely have a shady side to them. And yes, our research suggests that stakeholders should at least question whether an unwise outsourcing decision is actually being indicative of a major ethical problem. And one of your studies shows that companies with ethical problems are more likely than others to make the unwise outsourcing decisions. Yep, that's absolutely right. In the study you're referring to, we start with the premise that if the reason a company makes an unwise IT outsourcing decision is that they're trying to cheat accounting rules, then that same company is probably going to cheat in other ways too. If you're using IT outsourcing contracts to manipulate your financials, then you're probably also going to use other available tricks to manipulate those financials also. So to test that logic, we went back and looked back at the period right before the Sarbanes-Oxley Act was passed. And back then, the U.S. government formally identified 21 companies from the Fortune 500 that appeared to have been substantially cheating on their financial statements. So if those 21 companies were cheaters, and if outsourcing your strategic assets is really just a form of cheating, then the 21 cheater companies should be more likely than others to outsource. And you know, that's exactly what we find. The companies that the U.S. government said were cheating in other ways were also five times more likely than the rest of the Fortune 500 to be engaged in the unwise outsourcing contracts. If known cheaters are the companies most likely to make certain IT outsourcing decisions, then we really need to question those outsourcing decisions. Many C-suite executives are compensated based on company financial performance. Can you explain whether management compensation plans actually lead to better decisions? Yeah, very often yes. Um, Incentive compensation plans can be a really powerful tool to get your executives and other employees to work hard and make decisions that are in the best interest of their employers. The trick is that sometimes employees will do very dysfunctional things to get the incentives. For example, many executives receive bonuses based on net income. Well, research and development is an expense, so if you stop researching right now, you'll report less expenses this year and therefore you can get a bigger bonus this year. However, if you stop researching, then you won't have new products in a few years, and then there's gonna be trouble. In a similar way, our research suggests that executives can increase their bonuses by making unwise outsourcing decisions that temporarily make short-term financial performance look good, but can actually have devastating long-term consequences. So incentives can have both good and bad effects. How do you reduce the chance of the bad effects occurring? Incentives can be very effective, but it's essential that you design the incentive plans carefully and that you monitor executives to make sure they're earning the incentives the right way. And really, that's one of the main goals of our research, to make auditors, boards, and other stakeholders aware of the risks that are involved with certain IT outsourcing contracts, and also to increase the awareness that executives might have incentive to make outsourcing decisions that can actually hurt the long-term performance of their firms. Thank you so much again for joining us today, Professor Litka. I really enjoyed learning about your research on the impact of accounting on information technology outsourcing decisions, and I hope our listeners enjoyed it as well. Thank you, Susan, that was, that was great. 
Thank you for listening to Inspiring Minds. Stay tuned for our next installment featuring more VSB students discussing research topics with our world-class faculty.